thank you. Uh, so uh, today, I'm going to introduce uh, Colossal AI. Uh, it's an efficient uh, deep learning system. Uh, so uh, we already uh, actually opened the source code on GitHub. If you if you like, please check here. Uh, so uh, uh, let me also briefly introduce myself. Uh, so I'm a professor at National U University of Singapore. I got my uh, PhD in computer science from UC Berkeley. Uh, so for my research interests, uh, they uh, include the high performance computing, uh, deep learning optimization, and also machine learning system. So uh, we know uh, in the last uh, uh, three years, uh, supercomputers are becoming more powerful uh, because those huge, uh, because of uh, those, those huge AI models. We know uh, in 2018, so Google uh, proposed a BERT, uh, and uh, Google also used the BERT for its uh, search engine. Uh, however, uh, in 2018, people saw that BERT, is, BERT was huge, BERT was too large, because BERT has uh, uh, roughly 300 million parameters. Uh, however, uh, this computation is, is very crazy, and uh, the AI models is, it is not a, becoming smaller they are they are becoming even uh, much larger now uh, now the Google's three transformer uh, which which is being used uh, in Google Translate uh, now they have 1.6 trillion parameters it's it's very crazy uh, we know uh, even we have Moore's law uh, which means uh, the our, our chip or CPU or, some, or GPU um, the computing power of CPU can double in 18, uh, 18 months. However, uh, the size of AI model can double in just uh, 3.5 months. It's, it, it's, it's much uh, much faster than the growth of our AI chips. Uh, so how can we deal, deal with it in, in the future? Um, that's, uh, that's why we propose a colossal AI, uh, which is a new system to uh, to handle the huge data set and more complex model, and also uh, more complicated uh, computational architectures like CPU, GPU, or TPU. Okay. So uh, there are some existing solutions in industry, uh, but uh, they are they're not enough yet. I, I, I think uh, like NVIDIA, Micron, uh, Microsoft Deep Speed and uh, Google's uh, uh, maintenance the flow and Facebook at FSDP. So the key idea is uh, a 3D parallelism. Uh, the first is data parallelism and then tensor parallelism and then pipeline parallelism. Uh, but they are not uh, very efficient uh, for processing huge models. Um, let me briefly uh, go, over, um, go over the idea here. And, and uh, I, I, but I want to, uh, introduce our solution, and, and then I will give a, a comparison between our solution and the industry solution. For our, our solution uh, in the future, we want to build a, a, an abstract layer. In this layer, we, we will uh, do the optimization, parallelism, and the memory, uh, memory efficient optimization uh, in these layers. So, so the AI users they just needed to write a, a simple uh, model or a simple code on their laptop. And then our system or our layer can help the AI users to automatically deploy their, uh, their, uh, their desktop code to supercomputers, to, uh, to like scale cloud, uh, cloud systems. And uh, 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 because uh, we know the 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 parallel and the distributed training is really anno annoying. Even uh, even a team of ten or twenty experts can spend uh, uh, I think uh, three months to uh, to deploy the di distributed AI models. So we uh, we want to uh, build an efficient system which will do that for the data science, uh, the, the, the data scientists and uh, AI users. So in this way, AI users just need to write uh, simply uh, uh, 
a simple uh, simple code on their laptop, on their desktop, and then uh, they can use uh, their uh, their single uh, single server code to control the uh, supercomputers or distributed systems. Uh, and uh, we want to uh, maximize the computational efficiency, uh, minimize the communication, and uh, also uh, minimize the code change. Uh, in, this, in this way, we can minimize the deploy, deployment co costs. Um, for example, uh, without, uh, without a class of AI, probably a team of 10 experts will spend three months to deploy the distributed AI models. Now, uh, with, uh, we, with class of AI, even one data, science, uh, one, one data scientist can deploy the huge AI models just in one hour, I think. Uh, that's uh, what we want to do, uh, but 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 it's it's, it's not easy. Uh, we are we're, mm, we are also updating our system and software, uh, and uh, probably in the next year it, it will become much better. Okay, but now we already have some good performance. I will show you later. Uh, but how can we do that? Uh, how can we mm, make full use of? the sounds of CPUs or, or GPUs and uh, supercomputers automatically. Uh, we needed to find enough parallelism. So uh, where the parallelism uh, comes from for AI? We have data parallelism. Uh, we want to partition the data to different servers. And then we uh, each, each server uh, computes uh, its gradients. And then we uh, uh, we do the average of all the local gradients and get a global gradients and send the global gradients to different servers. Uh, that data parallelism and the pipeline parallelism, we want to par uh, parallelize between different layers. However, uh, there, is, uh, there is a data dependency between different layers. How can we do that? Uh, we use micro batch. Uh, for example, uh, the first server can process uh, the first data point uh, uh, and uh, the second server can pro um, process the uh, next data point, but, but they are on different layers. Uh, in this way, we have many, many data points and also many servers. Uh, they, uh, the different servers, they, 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 they just uh, pro process different layers with different data points. And also we have tensor parallel, uh, parallel laser, uh, which means uh, all the servers, they, uh, they process the one single layer uh, together at the same time. And after finishing one layer, they move to the next layer. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a parallelism uh, happens within each layer. And uh, so here is a solution of uh, the, from, from NVIDIA and Megatron. So they actually just uh, partition the model by draw, by column. It, it's, it's not very efficient. Uh, I, I will show you later. And also uh, Microsoft DeepSpeed, uh, the idea uh, is to partition the uh, weights uh, parameters uh, evenly and also uh, offload uh, the unused memory from GPU to CPU or, or even to the, to, to the NVMe. Uh, so for us, firstly, we want to optimize the uh, existing solutions uh, like um, the, the data parallelism, or parallelism, and uh, uh, pipeline parallelism. And we, we also want to propose uh, new parallelism, like sequence parallelism. Um, so why we want to in, uh, introduce sequence parallelism? Because it's very important. It's a, it, it's a new way in the future. Uh, the data dimension will be huge. Uh, it can become bottlenecks. Um, and so we partition the uh, uh, sequence. Uh, and uh, for example, here's one micro batch, second micro batch. We, we, we partition within, within the sequence. Uh, our, what's the bottleneck here? The bottleneck is the modern uh, deep learning model. They use transformer. For transformer, we need to compute a cell of attention. Uh, so here, as a sequence, we, we compute uh, this cell of attention. We may need uh, the data from here or here or here. And uh, we cannot uh, just exchange data between them because it's an auto communication. Uh, for example, we have P uh, GPUs or P uh, servers. 
uh, I've, I've used a naive approach is uh, uh, communicating overhead is p square. Uh, for example, we 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 have a uh, uh, one hundred uh, uh, servers. We need to do the communication for ten thousand times. It's it's overhead is very high. Uh, so for us, we uh, invented the uh, uh, run server retention uh, method, uh, which means every iteration, uh, we just send uh, our uh, key um, and uh, to our neighbor uh, to to the right hand side neighbor, and as, and also um, uh, we 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 send the key to our right hand side uh, right hand side neighbor and. Uh, and uh, receive uh, another key from our our uh, left hand side neighbor. In in this way, uh, we send the receive, send the receive, and the computer. Uh, we we just need to p minus one a communication messages. Uh, so p is the number of servers. Uh, so in this way, we can make it very efficient. Uh, so we we have better performance. So here, comparison between tender parallelism and our sequence parallel. Either. And then we can also uh, optimize the uh, model parallelism for NVIDIA approach. So they just uh, partition, uh, I mean, the tensor by row or by column. In this way, uh, it, it's, it's, it's simple, but however, if we have 1,000 uh, servers, each server needs to, to uh, communicate with uh, 999 servers. The, the, the communication overhead is very high. And for example, we have, we have 10,000 uh, servers. Each server need, needs to communicate uh, with uh, 99,000, uh, uh, 999 servers. And th th that's crazy. So uh, we want to reduce the communication overhead. So we, we build a 2D approach. Uh, 2D approach, the idea is each server just needed to uh, communicate uh, with uh, the server within the same same row or same column. For example, we have uh, we 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 have one hundred uh, uh, thousand. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, if 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 we have uh, ten thousand servers, it's ten thousand equals one hundred by one hundred. So we we just need to communicate uh, with uh, ninety nine server. The communication overhead can be much lower, and also we have a better uh, memory efficiency. And uh, in the same way, we can do the 3D approach. Uh, for example, we have one thousand uh, servers. We partition. Uh, we 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 arrange them in into a ten by ten by ten um, cube, and 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 then each server just need to commute with nine servers. Communication uh, overhead can be even lower. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, those our our approach. We also have data parallelism approach, uh, which means uh, we can process like uh, ten times more images per iteration, and uh, we propose some new algorithm like LARS and LAM. Uh, so in this way, uh, we train the same number of epochs. And we can also get the same accuracy. Um, that's why we can reduce the training time, for example, of VIT from uh, 73 hours to roughly a half hour. Uh, and also, we reduce the bar training time from three days to 76 minutes. Uh, so, according to paper with code, our large lamp have been widely used in many different applications. Um, so here is a screenshot from paper with code. And we also, uh, since 2017, all the image and training speed of our records were created by our large algorithm. Um, yeah, and uh, many different uh, industry companies, they are using our approach. Uh, for example, so even in one server, um, it, it shows our approach much better. Uh, and according to NVIDIA public GitHub, our approach is 72 times faster than the previous approach. So here is a screenshot from NVIDIA public GitHub. Our approach is 72 times faster. Uh, okay, so uh, let me briefly sum some of our system. It's, it's more efficient, and we have a, a more efficient uh, uh, memory system. 
And uh, in the future, we want to build an abstract layer, which means can automatically process all the uh, huge models. The AI user just need to write uh, the code, write a simple code on the laptop, and, uh, and then we can help them to deploy on cloud, on supercomputer, on, the, on, on a distributed system. Uh, so we have many design and uh, uh, implementations to support that. Um, yeah, so so here is a demo of how how can you write a code and then uh, distribute that to a system to 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 distribute system or cloud system very easily. Uh, you just need to change one line of code. Uh, I believe I only have fifteen minutes. Uh, oh, it's done. So if you are interested. Uh, please, please, please check uh, my QR code. Um, we have open source. Uh, yeah, GitHub. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Very interesting talk. Um, I think we have uh, time for a, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, one question is: so a, a, tra a training speed, uh, a training speed up from over seventy hours to thirty minutes is is sounds amazing, right? Um, mm -hmm. In your experience and your experiments, um, how large models would this enable a data scientist to train? And uh, what do you think are the the limiting factors still? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I I I think for example I I, I show several different results. So uh, uh, let me pick one. So for for Bert, uh, Bert has uh, three hundred million uh, parameters. Uh, so even the research scientists at Google, uh, they need three days to finish the training. Now we can reduce the training time to uh, seventeen six minutes. Uh, I think it's it's already very fast uh, for for the data set, and uh, I think they will need to to use the wiki, uh, some something like that, uh, like like the wiki data set. It's it public. Yeah. Huh, okay, understand. Um, maybe I think we have time for one final final question. Um, huh. This is a slightly slightly different one. Um, I, I don't think there's a, a necessarily a right or wrong answer to this one, but. Um, as data science and artificial intelligence grows, like seemingly this field just gets bigger and bigger. And I think you you, you alluded to it at the beginning of your talk that essentially no one can know everything, right? This this approach indeed sounds to be helping reduce complexity for end users. Do you think that um, traditional roles of like data scientists, engineers, architects, do you think that they are the right roles for AI in the future, or do you think that a change is needed? <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I think uh, that's, that's a very good question. So, uh, to my understanding, now uh, most of the data scientists, uh, they uh, some of them just <laughs> they are just collecting data, and uh, also to process the data, and then uh, to do the data. Um, I mean, uh, or write some Python or C plus plus code to get information from the data. Uh, that's uh, probably. Uh, not very efficient, uh, right? Uh, in, in in the future, our data set can be huge. For example, uh, the Facebook users, they can produce, uh, I think, over 1 billion pictures per day. Uh, YouTube users uh, can, pro can produce uh, seven, uh, 700 hours of video per minute. Um, so the gross, uh, gross rate of the data, I, I, I think, uh, is crazy. We we human cannot just uh, uh, use the traditional approach to process data. We 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 need a better better method, and also we need to work with AI. To I think data scientists also need to work with AI to efficiently process the huge data. Set. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Um, awesome. I think we're at time, but um, thank you so much, uh, Professor Yeo, for for joining us this evening. Um, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>